Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today we are heading back to Europe for the last of the races at Brands Hatch. But before we do that, I'm just going to check that we've got the race difficulty set to normal. We've been doing some grinding recently, so I just want to make sure that we have got it on our usual setting that we use for these videos. So we head over to Brands Hatch and we are first on all of the races with the exception of the World Touring Car 700, the topic of this particular video. The car that I'm going to use is my normal grinding car, probably my favourite car in the whole game if I'm honest, it is the BMW VGT. This has been tuned to be 700pp or less already but we're running on the racing soft tyres. And you'll notice that the output adjustment is 95, the ballast is 200 and the power strip to 94. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much standard for me how I normally have them. But you can pause and rewind the video if you want to view that in more detail. For now, let's get into the race. It's the World Touring Car 700, 10 laps of the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set the fuel map to four. That hopefully will get us to the end of the race without stopping. I don't know whether the other cars are going to be stopping at this point, uh, but uh, fuel map four should hopefully get us there. And you'll also notice that during this race, I am uh, upshifting early just to add in a little bit more fuel saving. I tend to drive the BMW that way anyway, or the BMW VGT because the VGT cars that I have don't seem to have a problem with performance if you're up shifting early. Some cars you need to really rev out the whole of the rev range. I've tended to find that this BMW is quite happy at uh, changing up midway through the rev band. So at the moment, we're just trying to work our way through the traffic. We are now up into 16th place and that's all been fairly straightforward, but we've got a real train of cars in front of us that we're going to need to negotiate towards the end of the lap so i'm just trying to get onto the back of them as quickly as we can i will take you through my turning points braking points gears etc in a moment but you can of course pause rewind the video run it more slowly if you want to analyze the things a little bit more i'm not the perfect racer i'm average at best but this is how i managed to get gold on this particular track so we've got the uh, Mazda and the Lamborghini getting into each other there. We ran into the back of one of those on the way in as well. But we did manage to get through there and then up through the gears as we approach the first corner. So breaking between the one and two board. I've got to navigate these two cars as well. So the Mustang is getting in the way a little bit. Underneath the bridge and we bury the brake pedal down into second gear but the Mustangs come up the inside which means we can't take our normal line. Once we've cleared the Mustang we can come across the track, brake for the pretty much the full length of that piece of kerb, turning in before the end of the kerb and then a short run down to this corner where I start to brake at the beginning of the kerb, down into third gear and that's the right hand side kerb that I'm watching for and then up through the gears and again we've now got to watch for some reasonably tidy overtakes on some of these cars as we get to what I find one of the trickiest sections of this particular track. So watching out for the boards here, I'm pretty much breaking so just before the number one board down into third gear to get turn in and also trying to take quite a lot of the kerb on the inside. Caught these definitely at the wrong time there we've gone too wide again with the Aston Martin and the Lexus I'm opting to try and follow through the Aston Martin that paid off and just trying to regulate my braking so that I don't actually run into the back of the Aston braking on the number one board to outbreak the Aston Martin using third gear and we need to try and come up the inside of these two and you go the outside of the BMW and then we need to get lined up for the first corner. So again, break in midway between the two and the one, down into fourth gear, being careful not to run too wide and into the gravel. Break in as we go underneath the bridge, down into second gear for rotation, pick up the apex and then we can let it drift out to the left-hand side. We can probably do that a little bit more. 
braking at the beginning of this kerb and then turn in halfway down in third gear and then use that runoff strip on the outside as we exit the corner. Just before the right hand kerb I'm braking down into third gear, still gone a little bit deep on there so that corner is definitely not right and we could certainly be taking quite a bit more speed through there. Into what I find to be the difficult section, so again braking between the two and the one board, looking just to run that kerb on the right hand side in fourth gear. Down into third for this one, we can normally get much more kerb than that, there is a little bit of a strip so we can get way up on the kerb a bit more as with this corner here but we have got to be careful of this G70 in front of us we're going to go down the inside third gear for this one the corner was a little bit more cute than we would like because we were negotiating the Genesis and then we're up into fourth place with three more cars to catch and overtake and we are just coming up for the end of lap three so again, as we come down here, we're just going to look for the between the two and the one, bury the brake pedal, just feathering the brake a little bit there with a bit of trail braking, fourth gear through there, underneath the bridge, down into second gear again, two cars to negotiate through this corner, managed to do those relatively well, a little bit of touching, so I don't know we're going to get a clean race bonus in this particular race, but it is a 10 lap race and we're going to have one or two incidents anyway so I'm not worried about that too much so again third gear I think you could probably take that one in fourth if you were to slow down just to start braking a little bit earlier than I am get that apex straighten it a little bit more and I think you could get fourth gear through there would be the better option um, I'm not overly confident at Brands Hatch so for that reason I'm not pushing it to the lines so that I avoid the gravel and the other thing is I do tend to brake a little bit earlier than I need to and I tend to use a, uh, a lower gear than I need to on some of these corners just to make sure that we keep it pointing in the right direction and making headway. Just caught the back of the Suzuki as we went through there that overtake could have been a little bit cleaner uh, the Suzuki slowed down a little bit sooner than I did, indicating that I am braking a little bit too late for some of these corners. But by the end of lap four, we are already into first place and some two seconds just about ahead of the second place runner. So now it would be quite nice to try and build a pit stop and that would give us the ability to pit if we did need to but at this stage where I'm way out in front I've moved the power setting out to six so full lean because we know that we've got the speed to get in front and stay in front of these cars just looking at the time to the car behind we're still making time on the second place up to 5.2 5.6 so making some good time on the car behind. So I've just leaned the fuel mixture right the way off so that we will have enough fuel to get to the end of the race. Probably would have needed to do that anyway because we've got uh, five laps, six including this one, and we've got 5.4 laps of fuel. So probably only just enough fuel to get to the end of the lap anyway. So leaning it off to six would have been better. That was a much better corner, taking a lot more of the inside. And with that one, just getting the left-hand tyres just to run across that bit of kerb is really nice. I find that this BMW is really settled around this course and really, really suits this track no end. So that is lap five done. And it's just same old, same old from here on in. Just giving these corners just a little bit of respect. I've gone a bit wide there. You don't really want to go any wider on that section, otherwise you are likely to put wheels into the gravel. Now, great news for us is the third and fourth place drivers are both pitting. They're on hard and medium tires. We're on the racing soft, so we've definitely got a much faster compound than the people around us. But as you'll see on lap 10, sorry, lap six of 10, our tires are actually looking in pretty good shape. We're not sliding this through all of the corners. 
we're not throwing it into corners we're taking it relatively easy and just looking after these tires as much as we can so i don't think there's any real need to go for the uh, harder compound tires unless you really want to do things with the tuning but as you can see with this particular car and this tuning this is really a slum slam dunk race we are 17 and a half seconds ahead a little over halfway through we're on the lean setting which is the slowest we are fuel saving as well by changing up early and we're still still way 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 ahead as we come over the line uh you know 19 seconds ahead of the car behind oh i had to take a visit to the gravel it had to happen at one lap in this race it always happens i try and push my braking later and later and later into that corner and at some point i always go a little bit too far and put two wheels on the gravel very often i'll put four wheels on the gravel but you can see here with the lap times we were 135s initially we're now into the 130s and the 131s so we are continuing to push we haven't backed off and we have managed to get the distance to the car behind now portilla is up to 33 seconds so i think that's probably near enough enough time to come in for a pit stop if something goes wildly wrong with the fuel strategy tires are still looking fine and with the fuel set to six full lean and with the upshift in really this race is just coming to us and this is ours to lose now by doing something really silly we've got 3.7 laps of fuel 3.6 now as we come towards the end of lap number seven leaving us three laps to do with three and a half laps of fuel in the tank so relatively comfortable and we're already coming up to lap a car uh, that was a little bit unexpected wasn't quite expecting to be lapping cars but nice to be doing that and we are now coming around to lap the mustang as well which we'll need to be pretty careful getting by through this section. We really don't want to throw it off the road. We need to be very, very careful. So that overtake was done quite nicely. In third gear through there to get up the hill. And then we've got clear space now to the next car ahead of us, which we are almost definitely not going to catch uh, because we've only got a couple of laps to run. Fourth gear through there, you can see how much curb that you are able to take at this track. Again, with this one, I can take more of the curb there, really get the right hand tires up onto that sort of little gridded area. The same with that one. I'm really taking this a little bit more cautiously than I need to. But at this stage, being 45 seconds now out in front, I really don't need to be throwing this around and doing sort of 130. So we've backed off to a, a 134 at this stage just to bring this home for a very, very nice, easy win. We've already got the fastest lap, a 130.3, which is quite nice. Um, I don't see any of the other cars beating that at the moment, but fastest lap was not of any concern to me at this stage of the race it was just bringing it home to get that gold trophy and for you guys just to show just how easy this is to get gold in this car and i absolutely adore this bmw vgt it really is one of my favorite cars in the whole of the game nothing overly special uh, there are lots of much nicer cars much more iconic cars much quicker cars than this particular one but I just really like the way that this car how it's balanced how it handles and uh, yeah just it really is my go-to car for most of these races so we're now coming up to lap car number 17 where it gets a little bit slidey on the exit of that curb which meant that we got into them a little bit couldn't quite back out of that fast enough but the AI bumps me enough 
when I'm uh, breaking a bit early or taking a wrong line. So, yeah, what's a, a bump or rub between friends? So we've got a few more people pitting. And uh, otherwise, this is all pretty easy as we go. So I'm not quite sure how many cars we are actually going to lap, considering how many of them have pitted. But we do start our 10th and final lap with a whole gaggle of cars in front of us that are going to be getting the blue flags waved at them. How quickly are they going to jump out of the way and how many of these can we actually get past before the end of the race? This is actually becoming a very exciting end to what was otherwise a very standard and easy and boring race, but now We've actually got the opportunity to try and negotiate a few of these cars, practice our racecraft a little bit, and just see how many we can actually lap before the end. Up to the uh, so we've got 11th and 12th in front of us, we've got a couple more in front of them. That was a better corner. I'm actually cornering better and getting more up on the apexes while I'm getting through this traffic. And I think some of that is now that I am back to racing rather than just trying to do in qualifying laps. I've now got other cars to negotiate and concentrating even more as we negotiate these cars. Overtaking on the right and the left, going up the inside of people, trying to get a better exit on people. This was really, really exciting and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. So the fuel saving was absolutely fine. We had nearly a whole lap, so we could have actually left the fuel setting to maybe four or five after we leaned it off, but it wasn't an issue. We came across the line in first, and well, it doesn't get any easier than that, guys. One minute, three seconds ahead of the second place, and we lapped everybody up to place number six that is quite some going a great car a great tune first place 110,000 credits we didn't get a clean race bonus there was a little bit of bumping going on there which was expected in hindsight i could have backed off and gone for a clean race bonus uh, but these videos are really just to show you how you can get these trophies as quickly and easily as possible so clean race is not really factoring into uh, what I'm doing. If I was doing these races for the credits, then obviously I'd be looking to try and go for clean races. Anyway, I hope that you have found this video useful. If you have, please hit the like button. Um, and also, if you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button and let me know you subscribed in the comments. That would be absolutely fantastic and it will help the channel no end. And if you're a current subscriber, thanks ever so much for continuing to support my channel. It is very, very much appreciated. I'm working on these World Circuit races at the moment. Once these are done, we're going to be going online, live streaming. I've got missions, uh, possibly getting into more Q&As and tutorials and all sorts of things coming. So um, lots and lots to look forward to. Anyway, thank you ever, much, ever so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.